back to the Celestial Invitational. We have two matches out of the way of the round of eight, that being Tom and Clento moving on with their 3-0 victories, pretty dominant by them. And after a long break, we had trouble finding some of our players here. We finally have Firebat versus Jay Shaw coming up next for you guys. Firebat obviously being a world-renowned player, winning the World Championships in 2014. As you can see on the screen, they're part of Archon as well. But uh, And going against Jay Shaw, who was our uh, definitely not very well known Chinese player, but has worked his way to get here. We'll take a look at Firebat's lineup. That being the Mill Rogue, which we haven't seen since the first day, obviously, as well as the Reno Warlock, and finally his more rampy style Druid deck. Uh, looking forward to this since we haven't seen these decks since the very first day, and it was definitely a surprise seeing it on that first day, Kaldi. Yeah, I wonder if you would want to uh, run the new Naga, the 5-5, the 5 that makes you. Yeah. Cards cost five. I guess we saw a Sarah. We saw uh, crazy stuff like, for example, uh, Cards of Shards. Not something we see every day here in Druid. But looking at Jaysha's stacks here, we have the uh, looks to be the standard Oil Rogue here. There is the uh, Freeze Maze and there is the Priest here. So this is exactly like uh, the strategy that uh, Tyus was going for, though. And it's a bit. Interesting that he's not running Reno, but he's only running one Fireball. Right, yeah, he doesn't have the Reno in the Mage deck. And uh, the Priest deck it might get him into a bit of trouble here because it is a very anti aggro focused Priest deck. We saw it tops out at that Justicar True Heart, so no big things like the Mind Control or. You know, stuff like that to be able to push him through the game in something like a Yosera like that. But uh, yeah, going to be difficult to be able to be aggressive with that Priest against the lineup of Firebat, which is definitely anti aggro focus as well, going with that Ramp Druid and the Mill Rogue as well as the Reno Warlock. So this is a very interesting matchup. We typically don't see these decks whatsoever. And I guess before we get into those games, I want to talk about the players first. Obviously, Firebat, super well known, like I mentioned earlier. Jay Shaw, he made his way here, qualifying, you know, through the Chinese qualifier tournaments. And uh, he's able to get out of his group, which had Surrender, one of the best players in Korea right now. And uh, I would say that people even in China probably know Firebat more so than Jay Shaw. So this is definitely a David versus Goliath situation. But Jay Shaw has proven himself thus far, and uh, he could pull off the upset potentially. What do you think his chances? Arcaldi. I think the main thing is can Firebat win with this rogue? Now, generally, uh, what Jace would be going for would be to uh, counter the aggro decks. We have Freeze Mage very strong against aggro, we have Priest very strong against aggro, and, and Rogue very strong against aggro. And this would demolish, for example, Paladin probably 3 0 and be very good against something like the Hunter. But I guess what Firebat is bringing, I mean, Reno Lock is greedy, he has a very greedy Druid, and then he has the Mill Rogue. Uh, I feel like the Milrog may do really well against both the Freeze Mage and the Priest here. Right, exactly. Um, all three of these decks, Firebat, is kind of a throwing a wrench into the plans of Jaysha. The Reno Warlock is something that we've seen a lot, but uh, crucially, the Ramp Druid and Milrog, not something we see every single day. Uh, Firebat did have the same lineup. Remember, these guys aren't allowed to change their decks, per se, so uh, obviously we're not going to get the new wing of League of Explorers being put into their decks. Uh, for these matches, but they have to keep the same decks, but they can change up their lineups. However, Firebat going with the exact same lineup as far as his first match was concerned with the Rogue, Warlock, and Druid, and that propelled him to a very, very good first day. He was able to 3-0 on his first day, so he has won with every single one of his decks. One thing we talked to him about uh, when in our interview when uh, Monk and I were casting was uh, talking to him about the Mill Rogue, and he said that uh, even though he was going against the Druid, if the Druids know how to win that matchup, then it's definitely in, the f in favor of Firebat because uh, the way you win is you get a minion on the field and you go for that double combo but his opponent that day didn't realize that that was the strategy to go for so it'll be very interesting to see if Jay Shaw kind of practiced going against Milrogue knowing that that could be a matchup that he goes against going against Firebat. I mean generally if you're the less known player you have to make up for that yes you don't have as much experience in the booth as the max experience playing from a lot of people for a lot of money, so then you have to, I think, kind of compensate by doing more preparation. I mean, I feel like Jason has to know what type of decks uh, Firebat is bringing here. But we saw Shadowy, for example. Uh, Shadowy also brought Milrogue here in Group C, and he did end up winning with both his Druid and Paladin in first goal against Colento, but then just fell 0-3 uh, with his Milrogue. 
But the, the, the lineup that Conta was bringing was aggressive versus this lineup here is uh, the bad facing is very defensive. So I feel like Milrock will do better against uh, a defensive deck. But I mean, it's risky still on Fireball to bring a deck like Milrock here in around the face. So he potentially might be out. But I feel like the Druid, for example, the Druid that Fireball is bringing will do really well against. Uh, all three decks even, I mean, it will demolish the mage, he'll do decently against the priest, and, and I think the rogue might be some trouble, but I feel like Jason's going to win with the rogue no matter what. Uh, so, what I'm expecting is the rogue to, for Jason to be uh, out of the way pretty early. I feel like the druid and firebite is going to be out of the way pretty early, and uh, that'll just be down to the rogue warlock against mage priest here. Right, right. Uh, as far as that Druid is concerned, uh, how do you think the strategy goes against something like a Freeze Mage? Obviously, being a faster Druid could help in putting the pressure on and getting that win, but uh, will Firebat be able to go for an aggressive strategy, or do you think he'll go for a more defensive strategy against that Freeze Mage? I think he'll try to go as aggressive as he can compared to the scenario, but Firebat probably getting the worst matchup up early here. <clears throat> but I mean... Uh, he is running at least Ashid Drake, but Firebat had Milrogue, didn't he? Yeah. He did have Milrogue, so I, I, yeah, that's just something that's part of his deck to allow him to draw. We did see Shadowy ran to a bit of trouble not being able to draw enough cards in that instance when he was playing earlier. Uh, obviously, we saw him, you know, kind of have to sap and sap and vanish the entire time, and finally he just ran out of cards to delay his opponent. Uh, looks like that's a bit of uh, tech into Firebat's deck so that he makes sure he can draw into his options. I want to mention though, he did have the going first, uh, Shadowy did, with the Milrogue, and he kept Sap and he kept Blade Flurry. So I think that was very noteworthy uh, when, face when using the Milrogue, because you, if you keep two uh, removal cards, you may run into trouble if you don't draw your Cold Night Oracle, and that's exactly what happened. He got punished heavily for that. Right. And uh, one thing to keep in mind here is that these players know every single card. Obviously, when we're as we're casting, we see the full lineup of their decks on the screen before we start the matches. So players have been able to go back and look at those VODs and see every single last card. So Jason knows exactly what he's playing against, against Firebat, can start counting the cards and see what he's up against. Uh, Firebat, on the other hand, does have the same luxury, but obviously, like you say, this is not going to be that favorite of matchup for him since Jason can kind of just you know throw out all the cards in his hand. And the only cards that are pretty difficult to get rid of are that Sprint and the Azure Drake, which you know typically you don't want to be drawing too many cards against a Mill Rogue. I mean, this isn't the best hand though for Jaysha to face a Mill Rogue, as the Azure Drake will draw your card. I mean, the low step is going to be greater versus any Rogue, but it's just kind of slow and, right. and clunky. I mean, he does have the prep, that's the one redeeming quality, but think about it, he actually preps our Sprint here, it might even be too <laughs> over. Yeah, I, I highly doubt he's going to be able he's going to want to prep out sprint here. I imagine it's just going to be that Paladin Cheddar. He might be thinking about backstabbing that Death Lord preemptively, not only to get the card out of his hand, but to maybe just get some extra damage onto there so that he can finish it up later. Maybe with that fan. Uh, you know, you could go with something like the Azure Drake plus prep fan later on, just you know, uh, get as much mana efficiency as possible. While you know, you're not you're cycling, you're going through your deck, but not too quickly. Uh, in particular, that that uh, sprint in his hand, I feel like he's never going to use for the rest of the game. And he is going to go for that backstab, just get cards out of his hand, make it as difficult as possible for Firebat to mill him in this situation. And uh, Firebat. Uh, Seems to be wondering about how it, what he's going to do here. Looks like he's just going to go for the Azure Drake. And, uh, he has the, yeah, the, the, the three, three, mana, mana, uh, three damage backstab here yeah, on top of that. I mean, very powerful. I feel like yeah, Jaysha is playing like this is uh, a mill rogue. But still, you would also go for the sweater over prep sprint if you're facing an oil rogue here. Yeah, definitely. So, Jay Shaw with a decision to make here. Uh, I imagine he might go for the Azure Drake. Obviously, it's a bit scary drawing cards, but uh, could be too early to go for that Lothab right now. I mean, Lothab could. Lothab is basically a nice tempo play no matter when you play it, but, you know, coming up on turn 5 for Firebat, uh, does. You know, maybe Jay Shaw knows he runs two Azure Drakes or something of that kind, or maybe a Lothab of his own, so. Uh, Jaysha looks like he's just going to go with the Drake. I imagine he's going to go for the prep fan. I mean, you are cycling the fan, but you're getting rid of the prep, so you're not really filling up your hand too much here. 
You also also uh, killing the Death Lord, and that's going to be very important. Yeah. Gets the uh, Big Game Hunter out of his deck, which is it's not the worst thing ever uh you're not you know it'd be a little bit worse i believe to draw something like uh a lothib for instance if it w weren't in his hand or something like a heal bot that could uh you know prevent him from getting that battle cry even an si agent that he would want later to use for that combo so big game hunter in the end not too bad not the worst but not the best either yeah i kind of feel like uh, firebat is still waiting for the call that oracle his hand is a bit awkward but the backstab is actually linked here Compliments as well. I feel like, yeah, is he just going to hear? But he's gonna, okay, wow. he's gonna use the shadow step. He's gonna use the shadow step just to draw another card, and uh, that's going to limit the power with which he can, or limit the effectiveness of his Colette Oracle in the future. Obviously, not gonna be able to shadow step that in that point, but does have the brand in hand. So, if he ever gets those cold lights and gets J Shaw with a full hand, he can do a lot of damage milling him. Now, one thing to mention though is that he drew last. That's Generally not something you see from Fire Bash, so I'm wondering, he looks really, really tired. Could this possibly be something that's coming into play here? Right. Uh, you, you typically expect Fire Bash to have impeccable play, so you know drawing last there could be a bit of some uh, an issue. We see this play obviously didn't need the extra spell damage to kill that uh, big game hunter, but um, or or the uh, or the Azurgic for that matter. So yeah, very interesting that he did. Uh, he did decide to draw last. Obviously, it's not a very uh, easy decision to make, having to shadow step your Azure Drake. Typically, you want to save that for your Colite Oracle. So, looks like Firebat reconsidered in the middle of his turn and decided that he needed to draw more cards. Uh, in this situation, imagine he's just going to go for the Phantom Knives and the Death Lord, just cycle through his deck a bit more, try to get to those Cold Light Oracles. I do agree, yeah. But yeah, this was very uh, weird for him. I mean, there was the option even to go Bran uh, on top of that, but we never know, I guess, here. Uh, so we see the fan come down. Let's get the Death Lord rolling. Now, <laughs> somehow, he won't. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sorry, somehow Firebat's putting pressure on Jaysha's life total. This is completely insane. Sorry for cutting off. What were you about to say? Mm -hmm. I guess the Death Lord kind of messes up his play because I feel like Jaysha was planning to go with the Azure Drake Flurry. But still, I mean, as soon as Firebat gets that uh, Cold Light Oracle, he's looking really, really good. He has the values on top of it, so yeah, this is going okay for Fire, but considering that he hasn't drawn the Cold Light yet. Yeah, definitely. So, I mean, Jayshaw's taking a bit of damage here, but that's not the strength of this mill rogue. You're not trying to do damage, you're basically just trying to, you know, mill your opponent. That's kind of the, the uh, name of the deck, obviously. So, I mean, even though Jayshaw's a bit on the back foot here, if he can just, you know, stabilize the board a bit, he can get back into this game, and Firebat's gonna need to draw those Cold Light Oracles ASAP. Yeah, an interesting idea though. He takes two damage to have the Death Lord at what is that? One health instead of four. I mean, it's probably the right move, but there was also the idea of just trading in the Azure Drake. I guess he's expecting the Azure Drake just to get a kill by an eviscerate, but if he's at that low of a life total, does he maybe just want to wait a little bit? Right. Yeah, I mean he like like you said, that Azure Drake could die here. And uh, could even favor the 4 damage to the face, uh, even if the Azure Drake lives. So maybe he wants to just use his own hero power to take that out. Jayshaw realizing that, you know, this Mill Rogue is most likely not going to burn him out of the game. Most likely going to be a situation where the Mill Rogue obviously wanting to make Jayshaw draw more cards instead. So uh, I can see him being a bit aggressive, not fearing for his life total as much as you typically would facing a Rogue. And uh, just taking the extra damage here. Looks like he's going to do the same thing. Going to take out that Death Lord, see what we draw here. Going to be an SI7, not the best. Really want to get that combo out, but he can play either the Lothib or the Healbot here. Uh, I imagine the Lothib might be a bit better, but he might be fearing his life total. So yeah, it goes for the Healbot. What do you think about this play here, Kaldi? Going for the Healbot rather than the Lothib? I, I don't like it, personally. I mean, how is he going to die if there's a low tip on the board and he has 12 life? I don't see that happening, so... I don't know, I feel like this is just playing a bit scared. I felt like he could go for the low tip and then into heal bot. Right. It's uh, more pressure, it, it's limiting him, limiting Firebat more. I feel like Firebat, yeah, 
has more options because of it. But Firebat is now looking to push, it seems to be. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it looks like he's just setting up that deadly poison for future turns in case he draws something like a Cold Light Oracle and his mana is all used up. But yeah, I mean, maybe Jaysha just wants to have a huge turn. Uh, say if he picks up a prep anytime soon, he could play that low theb and then go for something like, you know, uh, prep Tinkers, make that guy really, really big. And you basically can't sap that as Firebat. Uh, even if you, I mean, even using 7 mana to sap it seems like okay if it's like a big guy on the floor, on the field. But, you know, you really don't want to be sapping Lothar because it'll just screw you up for another turn. Yeah, it sure will. But, I mean, we have to at least consider, though, that Firebat can't sap this. And now, as soon as the Vanish comes down, I mean, the sap is probably the worst card Firebat could possibly draw. What can he do here? I mean, sapping the Thalnos may even be appealing at this point, right. as crazy as that seems. Yeah, he could go for the sap on the Thanos, realizing that Jaysha doesn't have any options either. The crazy thing about this game is that Jaysha could have actually gone for a sprint at some point, and uh, he wouldn't have gotten punished for it. But yeah, in this instance, um, obviously you're a bit afraid of going for that sprint because of the power of that Mill Rogue and making you overdraw. But like you said, Firebat's going to go for the sap on the Thanos, realizing that you know he wants to just slow down Jaysha as much as possible, but obviously can't do much more than that in this situation. Prep is a pretty interesting card here. Jayshaw can use that to guarantee that the Tinker's Oil goes on Lothab. And uh, he has 12 cards left, as you can see. I do you, does Is he crazy enough to go for a sprint here? I think he should go for the sprint, but this is what I call the Firebat effect. You're playing against a, an actual champion, and you feel like he has every single card. You feel like he has two Cold Oracles and two Shadow Steps, and that's just the scenario that you're going to be playing around. I've seen this over and over when I was casting him with Infinity. The, the qualified players that were going from the qualifier just. Yeah, they played so scared when they were facing Firebat. And we've already seen Jaysha hold back and going for the heal ball before the low tap. But I feel like skipping, if he skips out on the sprint, that's just a, a, another example of that. Yeah, definitely. Uh, we do see that you know going for the sprint would be correct here. And he's really agonizing over it. And. Yeah, I mean, to that said, right when you go over to the sprint, Firebat might just top deck that Cold Light Oracle, right? So it's very difficult. Looks like he's not going to go for the sprint, just going to go for the extra damage on the slow tip and put as much pressure on as possible. Firebat's going to need to have an answer that isn't putting the card back into Jayshaw's deck. Uh, Jayshaw here not going to go for the attack with the weapon either, but uh, Firebat into a lot of trouble. And this is why this matchup isn't so good for the, the Mill Rogue, as he does pick up the Cold Light Oracle. Better late than never, I guess, uh, but Jace is not attacking. You could have put him down to 3 health. Uh, wouldn't that even have been better in case there's a Vanish or a Sap? Right, yeah, definitely. Especially because Firebat's going to need to draw some a healing here if he were to stay out of range of that. Jaysha does pick up the Tinker Sharp Star Oil. That would put him at 7 attack on his dagger. So Firebat needs to heal right now. He also needs to get rid of the board. How is he going to be able to do it? Oof, think about if he got the brand on top of that, who'd been feeling like crazy. But the thing is, Firebat's hand is also getting really stacked at this point. He has the heal uh, from the. Uh, the thing is, the what's that called? The refreshment winter, yeah. Like, that's some healing, but it would be enough. Well, it looks like, yeah, he's going to go for the prep sap, it seems like. Obviously, you never want to prep, or you never want to sap, excuse me, the Lotha, but in this instance. In this situation, it's just too much damage that you're taking from that Lothab. So uh, you're just going to have to figure it out later when that Lothab will come down at uh, that instance. But looks like Jay Shaw, he has a decent amount of damage. If he picks up the Blade for you, that would be lethal, but he does not. Uh, with the Deadly Poison and Tinker Sharp Sword Oil, it will bring his dagger up to, what would that be, 9? Yes, 11 in total, yeah, because he has the SI on top of so that. So we know that would have been lethal if he attacked last turn then. It would have been, yeah. There was no no good reason not to, that I saw at least. Uh, but go for the low tip. I feel like there's even some merit to uh, going for the low tip after the, after the uh, I guess, the, the tinkers. The tinkers. I mean, yeah, there's Could some be merit BGH. to a bit. Yeah, exactly. I think there might not be a BGH in a second. Obviously, Jayshaw knows the entire deck of Firebat. So if he's already looked at the deck and realizes there's no BGH, then obviously this would be the correct play. But, it could be uh, a point, yeah. Uh, yeah, in any yeah. case, Firebat does pick up a second heal ball, so that could help him quite a bit here. What What is Jayshaw's dagger at? Is it a 9 attack? It is a 9, absolutely, yeah. But he'll heal for 16, go up to 21, 
But still, he's taking 17. This won't be lethal though, and, and I mean... Right. If there's no AoE, I mean, there's the possibility for Firebat to just vanish this and replay the... Start replaying his minions and, and keep on healing. Wow, so Firebat just going to tank the damage, realizing he needs to do it now or else he's going to just take more damage to the face. Obviously worried about that Blade Flurry as well. There is an Eviscerate, so that's actually lethal, isn't it? I believe it is, yeah. Yeah, so that's going mm -hmm. to be lethal. Jayshaw is finally going to be able to pick up this game. Obviously Firebat struggling that entire time. And uh, Jayshaw going to go up 1-0. Pretty interesting game there. Now, we aren't obviously going to overreact to this one game. The lineups that both of these players have brought are pretty out there. So, you know, we, we definitely don't know what's going to happen until we get deeper into the series. But at least for that match, Jayshaw is able to take the victory. So, I mean, maybe he can raise his confidence and bring that confidence into the next couple matches to maybe take out the upset. If you were talking about the, uh, the idea of... of uh... Firebat really needs to win with the Rogue, that will be his weakest deck, and now he's already faced off against what we're talking about probably being Jace's strongest deck in the Rogue. So, but Jace had got the better of the, uh, of the first game here, mostly in terms of the picking, but I mean, Firebat, but from his point of view, this wasn't a, a one-sided game. It really wasn't, and, and this is the worst matchup for the middle Rogue, so I'm afraid for Jace if he's going to be playing... Uh, two weaker decks against this middle rogue. I think, like, Fabba can absolutely win here. Right, yeah, this is a pretty good matchup for that middle rogue. Obviously, you know, the Freeze Mage thrives in having a huge hand and just having so many options in there, but in this instance, you know, it's kind of scary to keep your draw cards because then the middle rogue just makes you overdraw. Yeah, so it looks like Jaysha is going to keep that Doomsayer, going to try to slow down his opponent as much as possible. Mad Scientist is okay. It does draw a card out of your deck, which helps, you know, get to that fatigue quicker. But on the other hand, you're not going to be milling the hand of Jayshaw because you do have the card out of hand. I want to talk about one matchup. That's the Freeze Mates against the Old Patron. And in that matchup alone, you actually wanted to draw the secret before you played the Mad Scientist. Right. Because every turn that you would fatigue uh, earlier was just horrible with the freeze mates and you would with you doing stuff like not playing acolytes because you didn't want to draw cards uh, that's it's, obviously out yeah. of the way now with the uh, huge nerf to patron but so is I mean, it the is same this... situation in this matchup do you want to be drawing the secrets first as jayshaw i don't think so i think this is completely fine i think this probably will be more determined by fire bat draw uh, but i feel like overall jayshaw is in a lot of trouble it depends on what he draws. If he's drawing the Emperor and the Antoninus and the uh, and the Alistraza early, he can get into a point where he just has lethal and uh, mm -hmm. and he can just ignore the mill. I mean, if he has ten cards or five cards or one card left when he has lethal, it doesn't matter in the end. Uh, kind of like the Fowler River deck works, but there is the point though. I mean, Firebat has two heal bots, Brand Bronzebeard. Uh, he has Shadow Step. He has the refreshment one through. So if if he gets Alex Strasser, he can just heal non-stop. Yeah, and that just shows the complexity of this Mill Rogue deck. Do you save those Shadow Steps and the Brand Bronzebeard for the draw and to make your opponent mill? Or do you save it for the extra healing? And that could be a delicate balance for Firebat. It uh, looks like it's going to be... Oh, it's going to be an actual kill on this Doomsayer. Firebat not wanting his Death Lord to go down so easily. And speaking of this Death Lord, when it goes down, what it draws is going to be absolutely huge. Obviously something like that Alex draws and not getting his Battle Cry off would be pretty big. Something like an Antonidas without using its ability and just dying off right away would be pretty big as well. Obviously we see it in Firebat's hand. doesn't have a way to kill anything like that uh, right away, but uh, could be pretty huge depending on what comes out of this Death Lord. I mean, Chase is just playing scared here again. I mean, I don't blame him not coming with the Arcade Intellect, but he may have to at some point. Because if he's just stalling and, and playing a secret every turn, then this gives Firebat more time to draw what he needs and put in more pressure. Yeah, absolutely. Firebat doesn't need to draw the Colite Oracle if there's no pressure put on put on him in the first place. And it's difficult for Jayshaw to put on that pressure unless he draws cards for himself. So like just like you say, it's going to be difficult for Jayshaw to do this if he's going to play scared the entire game. And there's some more card draw that he might not even play here. Absolutely. I mean, what can Jayshaw do now? Now he has no choice. I feel like if he doesn't go with the Arcane Intellect, he may just be... What can he do then? Like... 
ping and turn and then give five, but you know, so much time is the face, more time and just. Yeah, the funny know. thing about this is that Jay Shaw playing scared here will just give Firebat the ability to burn him down. So, uh, funnily enough, will we see the first Milrogue versus Freeze Mage game that ends with the Milrogue just beating him down? That would be absolutely hilarious. I feel like if it's gonna happen, it's gonna happen now. I mean, because this Milrogue is stronger than it's ever been. We have the Gang Up, we have the Brand Bronze Beard combo. Yeah, it's looking good. So. Firebat reaching for that Vanish, realizing that there's never going to be a huge board for Jayshaw no matter what. So yeah, just going to get rid of this Doomsayer this way and uh, allows him to draw more cards with that Azure Drake. Also realizing that no matter how much draw he has, it's not going to be as much as the draw in Jayshaw's deck with that uh, the Arcane Intellect and the, and the Acolyte of Pain and potentially Colite Oracles. Uh, not Colite Oracles, excuse me, with the uh, Loot Hoarder, stuff like that. So, um, going to be very interesting that, that uh, to see Firebat go with the strategy of, you know, bringing back his Azure Drake and getting that utility in the future, also getting the utility of that Deathlord as well. Yeah, I feel like Firebat really wants to save this weapon for a flurry later on, because there's stuff like Emperor, the stuff like the uh, Antoniders that he just really wants to avoid, and, and oh. this Doomsayer, he just keeps on killing it, uh, or, or bouncing wow. it here, second bounce in a row here. Are you, you know, surprised that he sapped here? Was he too? Was he that worried about you know getting his Azure Drake, uh, you know, thrown back? Uh, or I mean, it's, killed, it's, it's his main, it's his main minion. I mean, like fire, but okay, sure, he can stay alive for long with all this heal, but he also will have to kill JJ eventually. And and is he going to do that by doing two damage per turn with the Lord? I don't think so. I think right. Azure Drake is actually relatively important. Yeah, and he could use that for just for the minion to minion combat, which is pretty relevant in the situation. Obviously, Jay Shaw, if he just plays out that Doomsayer here, it just dies to the board. So, uh, pretty interesting situation. Firebat, uh, do you think he starts to go for the mill here since Jay Shaw has finally played out that uh, that Acolyte Paint out of the board? I don't mind uh, something like a fan of match here, but it's it's a bit tough. Yeah, Still, especially... he only has four cards, so it's maybe bit early to be going for something like that. I mean, I don't like eviscerating this. But how is he going to be dealing with this uh, with this Doomsayer? I don't know. Maybe backstab fan? Or backstab fan attacking with Ashdrick into the Doomsayer? What and going you... for the, uh, the Death Lord? I don't know. Right. I think what I kind of like that. Hmm. Yeah, it looks like Firebat's just going to go for, you know, drawing Jaysha some cards here. He's going to be able to take out that Doomsayer either with his face or something like an Eviscerate. But, um, yeah, wanting to keep that dagger in place. Very interesting play here by Firebat. Obviously, it's a really tough dance that you want to be, you know, kind of fooling around with in this situation because, you know, if you draw Jayshaw too many cards, he's going to have those options later on. Could have been an option for him to just let, you know, Jayshaw starve, only have those four cards in hand, and wait for the future when you want to mill him. But uh, looks like he just wants to make Jayshaw draw as many as cards as possible. And if you let that Acolyte of Pain die... Uh, with it having drawing one or zero cards, depending on if you let that Doomsayer stay up, then, uh, you know, in the end, maybe you don't have the requisite mill uh, to kill him the, in the end. The yeah, um, important thing about last turn was he going for the Death Lord instead of the Cold Light, and he figured, okay, if I'm going for the Cold Light, I preferably want to be starting my turn with the Cold Light, so I could use him to say, like, a second uh, Shadow Step or a Bran. I want to gang up as well, the Cold Light. But, I mean, Jace is just going upstairs, and is this a bit premature, mm. even? I think part of it is that he just doesn't want to get milled here, and he realizes that since Firebat has such a large hand, that that could be a situation right here. I mean, Bran is such a strong card in allowing crazy amounts of mill to happen, so I think Jaysha, again, playing a little bit afraid of what the possibilities are for Firebat. Just kind of fireball face. And uh, on the other hand, I mean, if uh, Firebat draws Jaysha enough cards here, maybe he could find that lethal with that Roaring Torch already in hand. He definitely wants to be healing right now, and I think he may even be wanting to save the gang up for something like a heal bot. That wouldn't wouldn't surprise me at least. He's up at twenty right now, and, and I mean, is Jace gonna go for the Alex Draws and then be left just completely vulnerable? Is he gonna be continuing bursting Firebat down? I mean, he only has six damage from hand. 
Yeah, definitely. Uh, he does have that Ice Lens for potential damage if he picks up a Frostbolt. Looks like Firebat has no choice but to gang up this Cold Light Oracle. Doesn't want that guy to die to something like a Flame Strike. And uh, at least just going to get that into his hand. So maybe he can pick up both the second gang up and a heal bot to be able to heal himself in the future. Uh, again, not able to gang up the heal bot right now, so that's not an option. Yeah, I mean, even a cold light could, you know, make him be able to, first of all, mill Jesha, and second of all, draw his heal bot and the second gang up. It's also the second shadow step that's going to be very important, but. Yeah, I mean, there's also the Vanish potential, so there's so many good cards left for Firebat, and I feel like Jay said this hand is just dead. I mean, two Arcane Intellects, uh, the uh, Accolade of Pain, he has Secrets that he can't play. F I mean, he may be looking at something like Frost Nova Roaring Torch. I mean, this, this right. just seems horrible. Yeah, it's really tough here for j -Shot because I imagine he wants to go for that Alex Straza, but obviously he has a completely full hand, and it wouldn't be too difficult for Firebat to make him mill plenty of cards, and obviously j -Shot doesn't want to be milling so much of his... doesn't want to be milling damage in general. And so look, he looks like he's going to play the Acolyte of Pain. That's actually insane. That could be very disastrous if Firebat wants to make him mill more cards. But, uh, I mean, Jayshot does go for the Roaring Torch through the face, has those double Ice Lances, so he could go for a ton of damage if he gets the right cards. Let's see what Firebat decides to do here. Doesn't have any draw other than using the Phantom Knives. Actually, just going to kill this straight off. Are you surprised by that? A little bit, yeah. I mean, I guess he'd have some trouble killing the 1-1 one -one afterwards, but could he possibly not want him to be... Ooh, plays the, down, yeah. yeah, plays the heal bot, which means that uh, if j Shaw is able to get rid of this heal bot, then Firebat won't have the double heal with that brand unless he, uh, you know, picks that up later on. And Firebat was thinking about using Eviscerate. I imagine he wasn't worried about the damage, was probably more worried about not having a full hand after he potentially vanishes his board next turn, if he's able to pick that up. So that could be consideration, but without the vanish already in hand, can't commit to it. Jayshaw is going to go for the Alex Shaw, so now that he's seen the heal bot and just end turn. Again, every time he does this, it's dangerous because he could start milling cards. And on top of that, Firebat, yeah, gets the Colette Oracle. Very huge card. And it looks like he's going to go for as much draw as possible. And uh, he's not going to have the mana to be able to heal himself up after this, though. So he the... could potentially with a Shadow Death. Right, I guess. right, right, right. Uh... Yeah. Gets the Ganga, discards the Thalnos, oh, the Oh, those are really good cards for J-Shot and Mill right here. Mm -hmm. He does have the second Torch, though. So currently, I mean, Jay is looking at how much damage even. 14, 15. Yeah, it looks he like he has, has the game here. So Firebrand needs healing, and that's not he's not going to have enough to heal here. Finally picks up the heal bot. Doesn't even get a Shadow Step, though. Even Mills his Ooh, own he Shadow his... Step. So that looks like it's going to be game. I think Jaysha has enough damage, if I'm not uh, miscounting this. He has... had he, wait, had he, had he backstabbed his own minion, he could have actually gone for... Uh, he could have actually kept and then bounced the Refreshing Wonder, couldn't he? Yeah, had he backstabbed his own Cold Light, he could have bounced the Refreshing Wonder now. Hadn't he lost out on the Shadow Step? Yeah, he absolutely could have. That could have been an option if he did that. And it would have been 8 healing for him. But as it stands, I, I doubt j is going to miss this. He doesn't have any cards left. So yeah, he's not going to miss it. And he's going to be taking this game and going to take a 2-0 two, two or two to zero lead excuse me, over Firebat here. And Firebat in a lot of trouble. Yeah, I mean, don't blame Firebat though. That was a crazy complicated turn and expecting to have the one card you mill be the one card you need in right. that game is just not something that's happening. But I mean, there was the brand on the board on top of that, so he would have actually had eight healing from the refreshment vendor. Yeah, and was there a chance for Jaysha to win the game if Firebat healed out of range that turn? Because, you know, Jaysha was milling a lot of cards there, and uh, do you remember what he had left? He had an Antoninus and a few like, kind of random cards there. Uh, yeah, could he, he was looking at secrets, he had two Arcane Intellects, so I feel like. Actually, Firebat would have won with that Shepard step. Wow. Yeah, he probably would have won because, you know, j -Shop probably would have had to kill the heal bot or else it would have, you know, gotten Firebat even more health in the long run with that Shadow Step, or not the Shadow Step, with the Vanish. So, yeah, critical 
you know, I it is kind of a misplay. It's hard to call it a misplay when the uh, the the turn was that complicated. But I mean, it is what it is. It is a misplay in the end for Firebet there, and uh, unfortunately, it cost him. I mean, you have to figure, okay, that the backstab isn't going to be that much. It isn't going to be worth that much. And I feel like he was mulliganing for uh, what he was trying to draw into a shadow step or a heal. I felt like that was the idea. I mean, he was going as aggressively as possible with the draw, and he just was drawing four cards when he had seven in hand already. And that's just such a minor misplay, but it ended up costing him big time here and may potentially be the whole series. Because, I mean, the Freeze Mates was supposed to be the easy deck to beat, as he has the Druid, for example, and the Reno Lock with all of its heals. So now he has to beat the Priest three times over, for example. Yeah, the good news for him is that he is playing three slower decks, and this Priest is absolutely anti-aggro. It tops out at six mana and that Justicar Chu Heart, so going to be very difficult for Jayshaw to just kill his opponent here. It's basically a deck that tries to stay alive as long as possible. Yeah, no question here, uh, but if we look at the uh, Chinese side of it though, we're going to maybe have a Chinese here in the semi-final, and something people have to be happy about, to see some variety, as you know, we saw uh, Braros fall ever so short here, sadly, against Tom, and, and so it's going to be Colento, Tom, potentially Jaysha here. Yeah, the last match obviously being Eloise versus Life Coach. So, yeah, let's see if Jay Shaw can, in fact, pull off this upset. He is in a great spot as far as the score, obviously, is concerned. Going to be difficult to finish off this last game. I feel like this is pretty uh, similar to the last match where Tom was up 2-0, to zero, but got his two wins with very or two very solid decks, but was left with a Shaman in the end. And uh, was able to take that game in the end because, you know, of his very excellent play with the Shaman versus the Zoo. But in this case... Jayshaw has a completely different set of uh, decks to deal with here and also a completely different deck that he's, com he's piloting at the moment in that Control Priest. So uh, yeah, going to be interesting to see how he deals with the situation. Has uh, a few options in his hand. Could go for a lot of cards, obviously, but that's not really something you want to do against the uh, Milrogue. You know, Christian, but I mean... What is he going to do now, though? He's still a bit scared of uh, potentially milling here. I don't blame him. He's looking at uh, something here like the uh, Injured Blade Master. That seems pretty cool. He'll do one damage to his minions, but it's a lot of stuff for Fiber to deal with that early. The Sap is a big card here, though, and potentially even Prep Vanish, although I think that may be a bit premature. Yeah, the Prep Vanish would get rid of the board, but obviously this isn't the most expensive board for Jaysha, only costing him a total of 6 mana. So yeah, it looks like Firebat not wanting to commit to the advantage just yet. Obviously that's an extremely potent card uh, in any matchup for the uh, for the Mill Rogue to use. And obviously the prep vanish is extremely good as well. So uh, Firebat just going to sit here, going to take it slow, allow his opponent potentially play the uh, play the injured Blade Master right back onto the field. And he knows that eventually he can maybe get the healing off of the zombie chow. So going to just go take it slow here. It's going to be very funny here to see the uh, thought steal. It's not a card that's played in the Western meta. And neither actually is just a card. We've played briefly, but this is Control Priest here, not Dragon Priest. I'm interested to see this. Uh, I really don't like this into Blade Master. I mean, with the flurry, and this is just almost game over. But I want to uh, apologize about last game. Uh, so it's been a long, long time since Shadow Step is in the meta. I think Nax Ramas was probably the last time that was actually played, and, and in that case it was uh, uh, with the Leroy, <laughs> the Leroy Gadison combo. But Shadow Step, of course, reduces the cost of the minion by two, not three. Oh so right, right, right. So that wasn't an option was, for him. Yeah, it was. It's Pratt that reduces it by three. I have to uh, ex excuse my <laughs> lack of Shadow Step. Uh, practice here recently, but so Fireball actually couldn't have uh, bounced the refreshment vendor. Right, so really nothing to do there for Firebats, uh, just out of options at the end, unfortunately for him. And uh, yeah, looking like Jaysha is, I mean, Firebat with a pretty good play here, does get the Cold Light Oracle and the Brand, not something you want to see as Jaysha. Obviously, if you play something like Brand and Injure Blade Master, you're just killing off your own minion. But uh, let's see what 
Jaysha goes with here. He could just kill off this Azure Drake, but that would mean that he's only keeping his Zombie Child on the field, and it's not, that's not something that Firebat really fears right now. And look, a 5 mana Yeti here on top of that. In the uh, oh, Nexus, Nexus, Nexus Shiraz, which obviously right. isn't going to be used for the spell draw, I guess, here, as that wouldn't make much sense. But I mean, Firebat is just out of cards here, and, and I don't know what he can do. I mean, playing a heal bot for the 3-3. Three, three. Yeah, I mean, he was getting pretty low on health, and he did get the, the full health off of it, so you might as well get that on the field and use it for the combat value. It looks like Jayshaw's going to go for the uh, Jessicar right now, just to set up for future turns. He can use that to heal himself uh, in certain situations, but he can also use it to get very aggressive with that Akanai Soul Priest in the future, so uh, interesting to see him go for that. And Firebat's actually going to tank the 6 damage here, just to get rid of that Jessicar. You know, about the bane, he shouldn't be healing for four or dealing four damage with his Akanai and yeah, I don't know what Fireback can do here. Even if there's a cabal, he could possibly steal the the uh, death lord. I mean, Jace has to be running at least two. Uh, but yeah, this is just rough. Yeah, Jaysha, an interesting spot here. I mean, obviously, he doesn't really need to fear this Death Lord too much, so I imagine, yeah, he's just probably going to take out this heal bot pretty, I mean, nice and easy there with that Akanai Soul Priest. And this is the this is the pressure that he needs. He needs to have this Akanai stick to the board so that he can start smacking his opponent for four a turn uh, with his his heal. Uh, that's, the, that's what the hero power is called, is heal. Uh, the original hero power is lesser heal, so uh, Jaysha, going to going to be trying to heal his opponent to death with that uh, Arcanine Soul Priest on the field. And Firebat in a bit of trouble, honestly. He doesn't have the card draw quite yet. Yeah, D2 dropping an Aulus Bomb here. Uh, with that, I actually did not know that, <laughs> I have to admit. I just saw it as the bigger heal. Uh, I have played, actually, uh, this this card here in uh, in Priest, but uh, I hadn't been looking at the uh, the name of it. Now, we do see him heal the Death Lord for four now, and uh, Dropping two of his own. I mean, the minions that Firebat mm. has, he really doesn't want. I mean, the Death Lord effect is probably worse for Firebat. There is the option, I guess, that he could potentially vanish them back into his hand. So that actually may come into effect. Right. I mean, I imagine the vanish, the vanish would be not too bad here, honestly. Uh, because those Death Lords, you don't want to be drawing things like the Cold Light Oracle. I guess he could gang it up if he ever is able to uh, kill off his opponent's Death Lord and gets the Cold Light Oracle on the field. But, I mean, say something gets something like Bran, it's a, pretty much a disaster. Um, so, it's just a really difficult situation for Firebat here. And uh, just taking so much damage from this Akanai Soul Priest. As we see the Sylvanas at the field, which is pretty good for Jaysha. Can't really ask for too much more than that. And now we see the uh, Nexus Champion Sarat hit the field. What is he going to draw here? Wants some sort of damage spell, I, I believe. That's going to be a Blessing of Kings. Pretty good card, honestly. And uh, I imagine just going to take out this Blood Mage Thalanus because you don't want to give your opponent that spell damage. Even as a Mill Rogue, it could be pretty dangerous. I think you have to, but I like cycling the uh, power with shield though. And if you're gonna do that, you do that first, obviously. So Ooh. I wouldn't mind that. But now, yeah, this is just Jaysha kind of getting aggressive. No fear any longer. Oh. Wow. I mean, yeah, this is just asking for for uh, something to happen here. I mean, for Blade to clear you, but I mean. Is Vanish going to come down? I would have to imagine Vanish coming down, I but think, then he probably yeah, wants to Vibre's trade the draw, first. Yeah, he's going to get the, the minion onto the field first and then use the Vanish so that he can get that into his hand. It's kind of like drawing a card here, which is pretty good for him. I guess he wants to potentially Cold Light as well on top of it. He wow. gets the Cold Light. Oh, wow. He gets the Cold Light. So now he can Vanish, put that back into his hand. But well, he can actually perhaps Shadow Step it though first, yeah. No, no it's just Shadow, shadow Step. It. looks like he... Oh yeah, I can Shadow Step it first, and then get that into his hand. Costs one mana, we do know how to math, guys. <laughs> so it costs one mana now, and he can now vanish after drawing his opponent a couple of cards. Uh, something like a prep would be nice too, but I believe he's used one of his preps already. That's going to be the end of his turn, and after Jayshaw was looking to be in a great position, now Firebat's right back into it. I feel like he still still is, is considerably ahead, and this is definitely still Jayshaw's game to lose. I mean. He can just play a part of it, and if, if he just starts to attack for four, five, I will need to get a second heal bot here, but yeah, I guess, you know, our math is on, but our meeting of Chinese is just not. Um, <laughs> as 
okay, but what about even here? Okay, I think I think Powell killed something you should play, honestly. Yeah, I mean, he looks like he's just afraid of getting into that mill range. Uh, I mean, just getting his minions a bit bigger would be kind of nice here. Firebat does pick up that heal bot crucially, so not going to be in too much danger of dying to that heal anytime soon if he does go for that play. Also has the gang up. Now he has to decide whether or not he wants to gang up his heal bot or gang up his uh, cold light oracle. Kind of a strange question to be asking against a priest, but, you know, this is where we are right now. Absolutely, yeah, I mean... Is five, but looking at going down O three, and this would be our third three O here. I mean, looking at, into this match, I was expecting it to go to wow. game five, maybe maybe a three one from five, but but yeah, this middle rock is just falling short. I feel like though, if five, but is able to pull through winning with the middle wow. rock, so actually he could can... actually take the other two games. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So this is really close, but he can vanish these guys to death here if he goes for that play. And uh, will be the end of this Akanai Soul Priest. But d would Jaysha still have enough damage with the Akanai in hand? Okay, looks like he's going to go for the Sap instead to kill it off. And the Refreshment Vendor is a bit worried about his life total. But is that just game? Did Jaysha just win it? Because he has the yeah, Akanai yeah, and yeah, he has, he has yeah. Blessing of Kings plus Akanai and heal. <sighs> That's 10 damage. Will Jayshaw see this? Looks like he's gonna go for the heal, gonna go for the Blessing of Kings, and that's gonna be Jayshaw taking a 3-0 victory <laughs> over Firebat. What an upset. Jayshaw looks, you know, mildly content. He'd just be the world champion, and, and yeah. It's really funny to see the reaction. The, the modesty is, is, you know, the expression is that it basically he, he won by luck or, or something like that. It's, it's how I'm at least interpreting Jesus. But I, I feel like he has to be celebrating as soon as he gets off stage, though. Yeah, it's definitely kind of crazy to see Jay Shaw just kind of, you know, shrug it off like, eh, I just beat the champion, no biggie. Just uh, putting another $1,250 into my pocket there by getting to the semifinals. And uh, he is going to be facing off, I believe, Tom in the next round. And uh, we aren't done with our round of eight quite yet. We're going to be seeing Eloise versus Life Coach. But this has been a crazy day thus far. All three zeros, not what we would have expected coming into this. We saw only one three zero the entirety of the group stages, and that was 24 series. Absolutely, yeah. There seems to be generally one weak deck if you're going for this nine deck format in each lineup. So the scenario where there's going to be a 3-0 is just so, so uncommon as people generally switch decks. And, and the five-game scenario seems to be the most common throughout the group stage. But yeah, three, uh, all of our games going 3-0 here. I mean, this is just not something we were expecting. Maybe even be ending early here. But next up is Mom against Rogue Coach here. Uh, who is going to be taking it? I mean... It is technically China, but I'd like to think that Eloise is, is not, uh, doesn't count as Chinese. He's been <laughs> really active here in the international scene. Obviously, my teammate, uh, and it's going to be really exciting to see how she does here against Life Coach. And the winner of, of the, that match will go up against Colanto, whereas the other semi final will be Jaysha against Tom. Another China versus Taiwan story, we've been seeing those throughout. But Tom has actually yet to lose to a Chinese player. So it'll be very interesting. He only lost to Colento 3-2, beat Pararos, beat Chaos, and beat Shadow, which has been the Chinese killer here in this tournament. Yeah, absolutely. Going to be very interesting to see that matchup. As for what's going to happen after this break, we're going to be seeing Eloise versus Life Coach. You definitely don't want to miss that, so we'll see you guys after the break.